joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom When the heart for mercy craves Sing in triumph o'er the tomb Jesus saves, Jesus saves On the last, give the winds a mighty voice Jesus saves, Jesus saves Let the nations now rejoice Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad Jesus saves. Nothing like that old song, and I'm glad it's true. He does save. Do you know the Lord is your personal Savior? Has he saved you? That's the most important thing to ask yourself. Are you a child of God? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the privilege to worship you this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful privilege to come and uh, gather ourselves together by this medium of Facebook, YouTube, and have our worship service together tonight. Thank you, Lord, for each one who's tuned in. I pray, Lord, this to be a blessed time as we gather together and worship you. You know each one who's tuned in. You know the hearts, lives, and needs of every person. Touch now. We'll praise you for all that you do in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. We've had a marvelous day, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, we normally have Sunday evening service live and in person here, but of course it being homecoming day, we didn't have service here in person this Sunday evening, so we have it recorded, but I want to thank you for tuning in and uh, thank you for being a part of our, of our online service. Amen. Sister Jennifer Gravel is going to come and sing for us this evening, and then Brother Ricky Harris is going to come bring our message, and uh, we're just going to worship the Lord tonight. Amen. Let's just have a wonderful time in the Lord's house together. Come on, Sister Jennifer, and sing for us. Recorded from one of our services uh, just a few weeks ago. My, what a marvelous, marvelous song. Let the Lord speak to your heart as she sings. She made her way to Jesus She stumbled through the tears That made her blind She felt such pain Some spoke in anger Heard folks whisper There's no place here For her kind Still on she came through the shame that flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet and though she spoke no words everything she said was heard she poured her love for the master from her box of alabaster and I've come to pour my praise on him, 
like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair. You weren't there the night he found me. You did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me and you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. I can't forget the way life used to be. I was a prisoner to the sin that had me bound. I spent my days poured my life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I'd found until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with the wonder of his touch so now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of i've been forgiven and that's why i love him so much and i've come to pour my praise on him like oil from mary's alabaster If I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair, you weren't there the night he found me. You did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me. In my alabaster bones. Good evening. Welcome to Four Mile Baptist Church. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you would, turn with us to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. We're going to be reading the first six verses of Proverbs chapter 2 and try to bring you the message the Lord laid on our heart. Message entitled, The Quest for Wisdom. The Quest for Wisdom. Starting in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lifteth up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasure, then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the, love giveth, for the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Let's pray. Fathers, we come to you right now. We thank you for the reading of your word. Father, we thank you for the power of your word. And Father, we pray you'd take the word of God now and challenge us and change us. And, and Father, give us remembrance of the scripture we've studied. Give us remembrance of the things you've shown us and help us to 
to present them to the people tonight, God, so they'd understand and so they would see the truth that's contained in these six verses. And Father, help us to see what it means to quest for wisdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Entitled Quest for Wisdom. Uh, we read the first six verses of the book, second chapter of Proverbs to you. And I, I want to give you this as a way of an introduction. Today, man seeks after a lot of things. He, you know, it boggles your mind all the things that man's seeking after. They want help. They want wealth. They want prestige. Uh, all, the list goes on and on. But if you study the scriptures, you find in the scriptures they contain what each and every one of us truly need. And that is wisdom, and it's found first and foremost in Jesus Christ. But also wisdom, God's wisdom, is found within God's Word. In order to find true wisdom, we must search for it diligently. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30 says that Jesus Christ is made unto us, is taught about believers, he's made unto us wisdom and righteousness. So a believer has the Lord Jesus Christ living in him or living in her, and, and we have wisdom to an extent. So the question arises then, does everybody that accepts Jesus Christ have wisdom? Well, the question, the answer to the question is really twofold. It's a yes and a no. Now, let me explain that. Those who receive Christ find wisdom because Jesus Christ is the very embodiment of wisdom. So if you have Christ, you have wisdom. But also those who accept Christ do not necessarily find the wisdom that is in the source. See, a lot of people think today that once they get saved, that's it. Brother Joel, they don't think you have to do anything else. They get saved and I'm saved now. I got, I'm got. i going to be ugly and I don't mean to be, but I've got my fire insurance. I ain't got to worry about dying going to hell. So I'm just going, I'm saved. I'm going to sit back and enjoy life. But the Bible tells us, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us over and over in many, many places that we ought to grow. And, and can I tell you tonight, Christian, that if you're saved, you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, then you ought to have a diligent search for the wisdom of God. Amen. See, one of the things that's lacking in the world today is real, true wisdom. Now, you find the only place to find that wisdom is twofold. You find it in a person of Jesus Christ, but you find it in the Word of God. Now, the reason the world don't have a lot of wisdom is the world has shunned the Word of God. They don't want the wisdom of the Word of God. But if you look in James chapter 1 and verse 5, you'll find there that the Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. 2, Peter, or 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15 says this. And that from a child, Paul writing to Timothy said this, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. The scriptures point us to Jesus Christ. The scripture tell us about Jesus Christ. We ought to know the scriptures as a child of God. See, we're not busy about learning the Word of God. We, we're not busy about trying to dig the treasures out of the Word of God. There's truths contained in the pages of the Word of God you'll never find if you don't study the Word of God. Listen, folks. Once you get saved, that's just the beginning. You ought to be striving daily to find the wisdom contained in the Word of God, and we ought to, listen, I get way ahead of myself, but we ought to learn the Word of God that we might know the person of God. See, the Scriptures tell us about Jesus. So we ought to learn the Scriptures so we can learn about Jesus and know Him more intimately. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5 through 12, I want to read a passage to you, and here's what it says. In Gibeah, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God asked, and, or God said, and asked, What shall I give thee? Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, 
in an uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept from him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I'm but a little child. I know not how to go out and come in. Thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered, nor counted for multitude. Now here's Solomon's request. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing and God said unto him because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life neither hast thou asked riches for thyself nor asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Solomon wanted wisdom. Solomon wanted godly wisdom. Here's what God told him. Behold, I've done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So Solomon asked for wisdom. Once you and I get saved and Jesus Christ moves in our heart and our life, we have the person of wisdom, but you need to grow in grace and knowledge. And as a believer, you need to continue to learn the wisdom of God daily. Now, you can't do that without knowing the Word of God. You can't do that without studying the Word of God. A lot of, a lot of people leave their growth up to the preacher. Well, I go to church on Sunday morning and I go to church on Sunday night and I go to church on Wednesday night and it's the preacher's job to feed me. Well, can I ask you a question? You only eat three days a week? What about Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday? Where are you getting your food and your wisdom at then? How are you going to deal with a lost and dying world that don't know this word there's all kind of stuff floating around out there today that's foreign from the Word of God that people are selling and saying it's the Word of God. How are we going to tell them it's not the Word of God if we don't know the Word of God? So we need wisdom. Now, I want you to notice in verse 1 through 6, as Solomon's writing there, he uses eight verbs to describe this quest or this pursuit for wisdom. Eight verbs. Now, a verb is an action word. What do you mean by that, preacher? If it's a quest, a pursuit for wisdom, it means that you and I as believers are to be pursuing godly wisdom on a daily basis. Listen, you can't live a godly life in this evil present world Live like you're supposed to live. Bring honor and glory to God and not get leadership and direction from God. You can't do it. You've got to have his wisdom. Well, let's get into the eight words. First of all there, Solomon said, My son, if thou will receive my words. Now, in the context of the passage, it is a father instructing his son to follow after and pursue godly wisdom. Listen, if you're going to have the wisdom of God, you've got to seek God for that wisdom. You've got to have an active and determined effort to know the Word of God and the God of the Word. You've got to. Let me ask you this before we go on. Is your heart's desire today, tonight, is your heart's desire to know God better? Is your heart's desire tonight to, to know how to, to live for God better? To know how to make decisions that God, that honors God better? See, even believers live a lot of our life and it doesn't honor God because we live the way we think we want to live and a lot of times we don't even ask God what he wants us to do. 
We shouldn't be doing that. We are to be following this instruction here, these eight verb words that he tells us that helps us pursue wisdom. First one's receive. What does it mean to receive? It means to take it in. Another way to describe it is to digest it. The object lesson of these words is to teach us his words and his commandments. Truth taught here is that we need to allow the word of God, listen to this, to get in us and transform us and change us from the inside out. The word of God will never change you as a believer if you don't receive it and apply it to your heart and life. I talk to so many people that read the Word of God on a daily basis, and they'll read it. Five minutes after they read it, they can't tell you what they read. Five minutes after they read it, they can't tell you anything they learned from what they read. Can I tell you something or not, Christian? When you go to the Word of God, you are to go prayerfully, first of all, and then you are to seek God and ask God to speak to your heart, and you are to read the Word of God and listen to the word of God, and wait for God to speak. Listen, if you really want God to talk to you, God will talk to you. See, the problem with us, Brother Joel, we ain't listening. Now, I know that's not good English, but it's good theology. The reason we're not hearing God any more than we are, we're not listening. Listen, I talked about receiving the word of God, digesting the word of God. The psalmist said it best in Psalms chapter 1, where he said, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He chews on the word of God. He receives the word of God. He takes it into his life. And he draws from it what God gives him from the word. I have never yet, in all the years I've been saved, went to the word of God when I was honestly seeking God, went to the word of God needing something, and God not give it to me. He's never let me down. Now, I went to the word of God a lot of times, and... and and do like some of you do sometimes. And well, I'm just going to go ahead and read a chapter so I can say I read my Bible today. And I'm going to go ahead and go through my little pat prayer so I can say I prayed today. And I'm going to dot my eyes. I'm going to cross my T's and I'm fine. No, you're not. You need to be cultivating an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, if we didn't listen to our spouses, any more than we listen to God, we wouldn't have a good relationship with our spouse. If we didn't spend any more time with our spouse than we than or with God than we do our spouse, we wouldn't have a good relationship with our spouse. Relationships take time. Are you willing to take time for God? Are you willing to take time to let God talk to you and receive what God has to say to you? Watch this. The next thing there, not only should we receive it, digest it, take it in, what else does he say? Hide my commandments with thee. Hide's an interesting word. It means to hoard up, to store it up. We should soak up the word of God like a sponge. Soak it up like a sponge. Now listen. I had a person just a few days ago that I, that I know they got in a, a bad situation and they got a little pressure put on them and they said some things that they shouldn't have said. And then he said, I'm oh, sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Let me give you a little insight. That happens just like the same thing that happens to a sponge. If you drop a sponge in water and then you pick that sponge up and you squeeze it, what's going to run out? Water. You drop a sponge in milk 
pick it up and, and squeeze it, milk's going to run out. Whatever, listen to me, whatever that sponge is soaking in is what comes out when it's squeezed. So I can tell you that when you get squeezed and the wrong stuff comes out, it's because you've been soaking up the wrong stuff. Say, Brother Rick, why do I do that? You're not hiding the Word of God in your heart and life. You're not receiving the Word of God. You're not hiding the Word of God. The psalmist said in 119 in verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Let me ask you this question. I got a lot of questions I know, but I'm just curious because... When I study a lot of times and I see stuff like this, the Lord shows me stuff, he'll ask me questions. And I'm just asking you what he's asked me. Listen, let me ask you this. Do you spend time soaking up the word of God? If not, why not? We're to hide the word of God in our heart and our life. Let me ask you this. Let's say tomorrow, God forbid it ever happened, but let's say tomorrow... That somebody comes through the county and they take our Bibles. They go into your house, Brother Joel, they go in their house, get all our Bibles. So Saturday morning we get up, we ain't got a Bible. They block it on the computer system so we can't pull it up on the computer system. They block it on everything so you can't get access to the Word of God. You don't have a copy of the Word of God. So the only word of God you'll have and you'll know is what you've hid in your heart. Have you hid enough of the word of God in your heart to help you and enable you to live daily? See, I, I, I'm being ugly, I know, and I don't mean to be. I'm just trying to be honest out of love. We leave these Bibles laying around gathering dust when they ought to be open daily, studied daily, Applied daily and shared with a lost and dying world daily. The Bible contains the answers that the world needs for all the wor problems the world has. But can I tell you this? If the answers are not shared, they'll never get the remedy they need. Folks, what are we doing? What are we doing? This thing's, I honestly believe this thing's winding down. I honestly believe it's getting closer and closer to the return of the Lord. And, and what are we doing to reach a lost and dying world? What are we doing to, to get closer and closer to God every day? And live more like God every day? Watch this. Not only should we receive it, not only should we hide it. Look what he says in verse 2. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. What does it mean to incline your ear unto wisdom? It means to sharpen via the ear. Boy, this one hurts. It has an idea of being eager to hear. Eager to hear. Now, I've been accused by some folks of having selective hearing. Brother Joel, you know what that is, don't you? And honestly, sometimes I do have selective hearing. But we're talking about the Word of God now. Listen, are, are we eager? Let, let me ask you this. When you go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, whenever you go to church, do you go to get something or do you go to give God honor and worship and praise and listen to him and get instruction from him? See, churches are not Burger Kings. We don't get it our way. We go to church to worship God, to fellowship with believers, to hear the word of God, and to hear from God. Folks, I'm going to tell you, in this day and time that we live in, we need to hear from God. We need a fresh voice from God. So 
So we need to incline our ear. How many times did Jesus say in the Scripture, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He said that in Revelation in chapter 2, verse 7, verse 11, verse 17, verse 29, chapter 3, verse 6, 13, and 22. And several times in the Gospels, he would say, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. You know what he's saying? Folks, it's time we turned our ear toward the voice of God. It's time we turned our ear with eagerness to hear the word of God. And I'm talking about the parts we like and the parts we don't like. See what I found out from working around folks, when you talk about the Bible, if you start talking about Brother Joel, a portion they don't like, they'll say, I don't hear that. Well, I understand. Can I say this? When I was lost, there were certain parts of the Bible I didn't want to hear. You know why? Because it convicted me of the sin that I knew was in my life. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm saved on my way to heaven. But sometimes there's still stuff from the Word of God I don't want to hear. But God in His love and compassion for us as children will take the Word of God, the light of the Word of God through the Holy Spirit of God, and will highlight sin in our life if we'll listen to Him. Now, I'm going to say this. God never speaks through the word of God just so you and me can say, we got a little knowledge. It ain't about knowledge. It's about knowing him more intimately. He speaks so we can hear, so we can obey, and so we can share with a lost and dying world. We're to carry this word out from the church and carry it to a lost and dying world and help them see their need. Folks, I'm ashamed to say we don't, we don't know the Word of God like we should. We don't know the Word of God like we should. Listen, there's so much float. I got to get off this, but I got to say this. There's so much false doctrine floating around today that it is unreal. And 90% of the people now, I'm throwing numbers. I don't have any survey that says 90. I'm just using that as an example. It's a great number. This is accurate. A great number of the people can't even distinguish when something is false and when it's true. Say, so why do you say that, Brother Rick? Well, if they could, some of these doctrines floating around wouldn't be floating around. They wouldn't be floating around. What's this? So we got to receive it. We got to hide it. We got to incline our ear unto it. I'm going to ask you this. We'll move on. Are you listening to God? Are you listening to God? Number four is found in verse two also. He said, Receive my words, hide my commandments, incline thine ear unto wisdom, apply thine heart to understanding. What's he mean by apply? It's to turn the whole heart in humbleness and eagerness to understanding. It is a quest, a pursuit for biblical spiritual understanding. Our ear is toward the, the voice of God. Our heart is toward the message of God. And our heart is willing to do whatever God tells us to do. Now watch this. When Isaiah... Over in the early chapter of the book of Isaiah, when Isaiah got in the presence of God, he realized where he was at, and here's what he said. Woe is me, for I'm undone, a man of unclean lips. He got in the presence of God. Can I tell you this? When you really get into the Word of God, and God begins to show you the wisdom of God, and God begins to work in your heart and your life through the Holy Spirit of God, you will begin to see yourself as you really are. See, here's what the problem is. Every one of us have a better opinion of ourselves than we should. We all got a better opinion of ourselves than we should. I don't need to know what my opinion of me is. What I need to know 
is what God thinks of me. You know what? That's why this book is called a mirror. When you look into this book and you allow the Holy Spirit of God to speak to your heart, he'll show you who you really are. And if you want to know who you really are in the eyes of God, if you want to see yourself as God sees you, then ask God before you read the Word of God, God, show me who I really am. Then I'm going to tell you, you might not like what you see. So apply my heart to wisdom. Psalms 19 and 8 says this, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes. Psalms 19 and 14, for a long time, this was one of my daily verses I used. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeeming. You know why he says that? Because what you're meditating on is what you'll eventually say. Just like that sponge. Just like that sponge. Let's go on. Number five. Look at it. Number five. So he said, if I apply my heart to wisdom, in verse 3, yea, if thou criest out for knowledge. What does he mean by crying out for knowledge? Listen, God's wisdom is, listen to me, is only found through the word of God, through the person of God, and through the access of prayer to God, seeking God's wisdom. You got to make decisions in your life, then you need to make decisions based on what God wants for your life. Why would I do that, Brother Rick? Let me ask you this. Do you know what tomorrow holds? Do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Do you know what's going to happen 10 minutes from now? The answer is no. God does. Do you know what God wants for your life? God does, so you need to find out what God wants for your life. You need to seek God to find out what he wants for your life. You need to get to the point and place where you're praying for it. You're crying after it. He says that also in verse 3. You lift up your voice. When's the last time you got on your face before God, you knelt before God, you prayed to God, and you told God, God, I, I don't know how to do what you want me to do, but I'll do it if you'll give me the wisdom. That's what Solomon did. What Solomon did. Now, a word of caution. Let me give you a word of caution. Solomon was the wisest man that ever was. Apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, Solomon was it. God gave him what he asked for. But as Solomon aged, Solomon moved away from his wisdom. He moved away. You say, what did he do, Brother Rick? He quit applying it to his heart. I don't know if he got lifted up with pride. I don't know what happened. But let me, Christians, listen to me. If you'll seek God, God will show you things from the Word of God. God will teach you things from the Word of God. God will show you things that He wants you to know from the Word of God. And it'll be as biblical as biblical can be. Because He, he wrote it, He can tell you what He said. But if you get lifted up with pride because God's telling you stuff and speaking to you and showing you things, God's got a way of humbling you. How do you know that, Brother Rick? You remember the Apostle Paul? Apostle Paul said in one place that least he be exalted because of the revelations that God had given him, he was given a thorn in the flesh. Say, what was it? Doesn't matter what it was. What matters is what it did. It served to keep Paul humble before God and dependent on God so Paul wouldn't allow pride in his life and get away from God. Christian, be careful. Pride is a pitfall you need to avoid. Watch this. So he said, cry after. Number six, lift up your voice. This is an earnest petition from the heart to God for wisdom. Psalms chapter 5, verse 2 and 3 says this. 
Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my king and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. You know, we need to start our morning off. I'm going to say this. I believe Brother Joel will agree with me. You need to start your morning off with prayer. You need to start your morning off with prayer. I remember a little joke that was told one time about prayer, and it said a guy was praying, and he was thanking God, and he said, God, I thank you that I hadn't, I hadn't offended anybody today. I hadn't made anybody mad. I hadn't said anything I shouldn't say. I hadn't done anything I shouldn't do. God, I've had a perfect day, but in a few minutes, i got to get out of bed. Listen, I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow. God does. So I start my day, when I'm headed to work, I start my day talking to God and asking God for leadership and guidance and direction and asking God to give me the wisdom to know how to react and give me the wisdom to know how to do what he wants me to do and live the way he wants me to live. And you've got to do that if you're going to live the way God wants you to live. So we got to receive it. We got to hide it. We got to incline our ear to it. We got to apply it. We got to cry after it. We got to lift up our voice. When's the last time you prayed and asked God for wisdom? See, usually what we do, me and Brother Joel were just talking about this. Usually what we do is we'll plan out our day, we'll plan out our week, we'll plan out our whatever, and then we'll pray and ask God to bless it. So what's wrong with that, Brother Rick? What we ought to do is talk to God and find out what God wants us to do and then do what God directs us to do, and God will bless that. God will bless that. See, James, the book of James says, we ought to say, if the Lord will. See, you used two years ago, every time somebody would say something, they'd say, Lord willing, Lord willing. You'd say, what do you mean, Lord willing? Well, I don't know what the Lord's got planned, but if the Lord's willing, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. But it's all according to the will of the Lord. Do you live your life according to the will of the Lord? Watch this. Number seven, we're almost done. He said you need to receive it, you need to hide it, you need to incline your heart or your ear to it. You need to apply it, you need to cry after it, you need to lift up your voice for it, you need to seek it. To seek is to diligently seek. It speaks of the toil and labor with which men carry on mining operations. Now listen, let me, let me give you a good example of this. I don't know who's, I don't know who's watching tonight. But if I could tell you 100% for sure there was a million dollars buried in your yard somewhere. I don't know how big the yard is. Let's say I can tell you for sure. Folks, there's a hundred, there's a million dollars buried in your yard. All you got to do is go find it. You know what y'all do? Same thing we'd do. You go get a metal detector. Something to pick up precious metal, you get a shovel and a pick, and you'd start digging everywhere, trying to find what's hid. That because you know there's some stuff there, because you've had information that's there, and you'd try to dig to find it. Let me ask you something. Why don't we dig to find the truth in the Word of God? Why don't we dig for the nuggets in the Word of God? I got a friend, good friend of mine. Me and him have been brothers for years now, and, and we share stuff together about Scripture. And, and he, every once in a while, he'll call me or I'll call him. And, and, and it's been an ongoing thing for years. He'll say, Brother Rick, I got a nugget I want to share with you. And he'll, he'll share something with me that God showed him out of the Word of God. Then I'll share something with him. Say, so how do you do that? Well, you got to study the Word of God. You got to listen to God. You got to be open and attentive to the ear, to the voice of God. And then, when God gives you something, He don't give it to you to hold. He gives it to you to share. Share it with somebody. Share the Word of God with somebody. When's the last time you shared your testimony with somebody? 
When's the last time you told somebody what God did for you? So why would I do that? Because if he can do it for you, he can do it for anybody. We're too silent, folks. We need to be seeking out the truth of the word of God. Not only say seek it, look at number eight. If thou seekest for her, her is wisdom, as for hid treasure. That's why I use the analogy of the money. He's talking about if it was seeking for hid treasure, you'd do it. If you seek after her, as for hid treasure, and searches for her, as for hid treasure. What's the word search mean? It means to dig. The believer's goal mine is the word of God. If we desire to know God and to know the word of God, we must be about mining the word of God by the power of the spirit of God to learn the truths in the word of God so we can share them with a lost and dying world, share them with our brothers and sisters in the Lord, and we can grow in faith and we can see people saved. God's still saving folks today. God's still saving folks today. Hey, you know, Brother Rick, he hadn't come back yet. Said in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, it's not his will that any perish, but all come to repentance. If he ain't come back, it's because he's trying to get some more saved. When that last one gets saved, we're gone. We're gone. See, that's the incentive to witness. What if the one you witnessed to was the last one to be saved before the trumpet sound? You win them, the trumpet may sound. Think about that. Watch this. I'm going to say this. I can back it up with scripture. We got to quit getting hung up. Folks, you watching now, you hear me. We got to quit getting hung up on denominationalism. We have got to look at the word of God, prayerfully study the word of God, allow the Holy Spirit of God to teach us the word of God, and let the word of God say what the word of God says regardless of what any denomination says. Say, Brother Rick, you in a Baptist church? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. But I got saved before I got Baptist. Say, you, you against denomination? Listen. Denomination don't do anything for you. Denomination will not get you nowhere. All denomination does is just... Tell people about where you stand on certain things. And the sad thing today is a lot of people in certain denominations don't even know what their denomination believes. Say, so why don't they, Brother Rick? Because they're not studying the Word of God. They're not striving for the wisdom of God. So what's the results? We've read five, eight, word, eight verbs here, and these eight verbs tell us we need to be pursuing wisdom. So, so what's the result? If we'll do them, verse 5 and 6, he give you the first the eight verbs in verse 1 through 4. In verse 5 and 6, here's what he says. Then, once you do these things, shalt thou, thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Understanding the fear of the Lord is having discernment. It's not being afraid of God. I'm not afraid of God, but I reverence God, and it bothers me when people refer to God in flippant terms like the man upstairs, and God's my homie and stuff like that. No, he's the Lord God Almighty. He's seated on the throne. Jesus Christ is at his right hand, and he's Lord of Lord and King of Kings, and he is our Heavenly Father, and he is not a dude. He needs to be respected. Listen, he said, then, then shall we understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. To acquire the knowledge of God means to know him by experience. You know, I got saved when I was 21. I was raised in church, and I knew somewhat about God. Now, I'm, I'm almost done. I knew some things about God, but now since I've been saved... Since it was 21, 40-something years, I can tell you some things I've learned about God. I can tell you this. 
When you need him, he's always there. I can tell you this, he'll never leave you or forsake you. I can tell you this, he's good all the time and all the times God's good. He never makes a bad decision. He never does anything to hurt his people. He only does things that bring good to his people and glory to his name. And God is a good God and all these people saying he's not and all these people saying he don't care don't know what the word of God teaches. Listen. Verse 6, look at it and I'm done. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Where there is true reverence for God, there is a biblical understanding and knowledge of God. If these people really knew, when they take the Lord's name in vain, if they really understood who they were cursing, it'd scare them to death. I asked a gentleman one time, I walked by him and, and he took the Lord's name in vain and the Lord stopped me in my tracks and said, you go talk to him. Well, Joel, I went back, I ain't going to call his name, some people might know him. And I asked him, I said, I want to ask you something. He said, okay, Rick, what is it? He said, why would you take the very breath in your lungs and curse the God that gives you the breath you just used to cuss him. And he looked at me like I had slapped him. And he dropped his head. Never said a word. I walked off. And I don't know if this is why or not. But about two weeks later. That man come to the Lord in faith. Now I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. But I do know this, when I talked to him that day, he realized what he was doing was he was using the breath that God was giving him to cuss the very God to give it to him. Folks, can I tell you this tonight? If you're, if you're a Christian, you need to be pursuing wisdom. If you're a Christian, you need to be studying the Word of God. You need to be asking God to tell you what to do daily. And if you're watching tonight and you're lost, you need to consider this. That God has given you another chance, one more day on this earth, to accept him as your personal Savior. And right now, his hand of grace is extended. But one day, the door shut, grace will be over, and it will be nothing but the judgment of God. Don't wait till it's too late. Let's pray. Fathers, we come to you right now. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the truth of your word. Now, Father, I pray you'd help those that are listening, God, to take the word of God to heart, not because it's what I said, but it's because what you said in your word. Father, I pray you'd deal with hearts where there's people that are lost. I pray you'd deal with them, help them to come to a saving knowledge. Where there's people watching God that are saved, but they hadn't been pursuing Wisdom, I pray you deal with them and help them realize, God, it's time they got serious about this thing. It's time they started pursuing the wisdom of God and an intimate relationship with you and get closer to you. And I pray you'd help us all now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.